All right, so now we're doing another problem from chapter 11. So this one says, a molecular bond can be modeled as a spring, or a, a chapter 10, probably, as, as a spring between two atoms that vibrate with simple harmonic motion. The figure below shows a simple harmonic motion approximation for the pair for the potential energy of a hydrogen chloride molecule because the chlorine atom is so much more massive than the hydrogen atom it is reasonable to assume that the hydrogen atom uh, mass 1.67 to a negative 27 kilograms vibrates back and forth while the chlorine atom remains at rest using the graph to estimate the vibrational frequency of the HCl molecule. So use the graph to estimate the vibrational frequency. All right, so, so essentially to start this one, we need essentially two equations. So we need the potential energy because this is the graph of the potential and uh, spring potential energy. So we can call it U. And then this, in, in this graph, it, it would equal one half k, where k is the spring constant, and then times the displacement of the hydrogen molecule. So because it's in one dimension, we can just use x. It, in a sense, it should be r uh, for radi uh, radial distance. But it's just one dimension, so we'll use the usual x. And then we need the equation for force to figure some stuff out. So the force is a restoring force. Um, and it's for a spring, it would be negative k, the spring constant, times the displacement, which is x minus x naught, where x naught is the rest length. Um, so the rest where there's no compression or lengthening, so essentially this point, where it's at rest. So as then we kind of want to use this equation, the force equation, to figure out the free, the <clears throat> first we want to we'll figure out the angular velocity, and then from the angular velocity we figure out the frequency. So this this equation means that F is M A, which is M X double dot. So it's the acceleration. Well yeah. The, let me call it the the derivative. The second derivative of X, the distance of the hydrogen from the chlorine with respect to time, so the second derivative. And nearly equal negative k x minus x naught. So just some, just to get the formula, uh, you can just call this delta x, and then you can figure out that you take that derivative of this twice, with this being a constant, because it is a constant, it is this value. Then you take the derivative twice, it'll disappear, and you figure out that uh, d2x dt squared is the same as the, the second derivative of the displacement with respect to time. So essentially, we have that that this equals negative k delta x. So. This turns out to be a, called what, what you call a differential equation in a second order because you, you're taking second derivative. So when, this is the most basic type of differential equation you can solve uh, because the solution, and you just need to plug it in there for delta x as a function of time, is the cosine and the sine. So it should be essentially, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot one thing. 
the mass is in front. If we want to equal it here, the mass has to be in front. Right? So essentially, you're going to get, when you plug in cosine and sine, that A, a uh, you want to solve this differential equation first. And that we're not going to go deep into it. But first by dividing by m, so that you have the second derivative of delta x respect to time is negative k over m delta x. You, you, you'll find out that delta x, if you plug it in, will equal some value cosine of square root of k over m t plus b. These are just amplitudes, but we're not interested in those. Uh, k over m t. So this is inside. And if you were to take the second derivative uh, of this, actually the whole thing, and then you you take the whole thing as delta x, you plug it in here, you'll find that they are equal to each other. So that means it solved the, the differential equation solved. So this is the, when you look at it, it's inside the argument of a trig function. So it should be the angular velocity. Sorry, the, yeah, the angular velocity, which is radians per, per, um, the units are radians per second in this case, because we're, we're looking at, uh, SI units. So, but we're looking for frequency, right? Frequency. So frequency, the relationship between frequency and angular velocity is that frequency is measured in cycles. So we use a conversion factor from cycles, uh, from radians to cycles, which is uh, one uh, one cycle has two pi radians. So you want cycle on top, so you're dividing by two pi. So this is the the relationship between angular velocity and frequency. And you just plug in, well, we look in here. This has to be angular velocity because it's inside a trig function with time multiplied in. So then we plug in what angular angular frequency is. So it's 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m. So we know what, so then we just need k and m to figure out f frequency. So mass, we know what that is, is 1.6, what's, what is uh, oscillating is the hydrogen atom. So it, the mass of that object is negative one point is this kilograms this value one point six seven it to a negative seven kilograms so we need that that k to finish um, so to figure that out we need that this to approximate this uh, graph so that's that's what you would use u so u we what we're gonna do is find a value for u that match that corresponds to an x a displacement and solve for k so we have that this so we solve for k so k is just gonna be it'll be two times u over oh sorry this is squared yep. over x minus x not squared so then we know what x naught is when we look at the graph. It's 0.12 in the nanometer. So, so x naught, the rest distance of the hydrogen of, from the chlorine is 0.13 times 10 to a negative 9 meters. So we know that. Now we just need an x and a u. So we can just look at this graph and probably the easiest value that I could find was the potential energy at at um, point nineteen nanometers is this so essentially this any any value would do that they, because they, you're you're finding the one that corresponds to the other but this one seems easy so so you, the potential energy at x equals two. 0 0.09 nanometers equals 4 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. 
So the potential energy at that distance. So then we plug in everything in here. So then K is going to be essentially, it'll be 0 0.09 for the one we chose for X times 10 to the negative 19 minus the rest length. This is more or less a spring. So the rest length of the spring essentially is, uh, is 0.13 times 10 to the negative 9. Sorry, this is a 9. So a 9 for nanometers. And then you square that. And then that's the denominator and the numerator we have 2u. So that u, the potential energy that we chose, that we got from the graph is 4 times 10 to a negative 19 joules. 19, this time it is 19. So then we calculate K from this. And we get that K, the spring constant in SI units, is 500. So then we can plug in now everything in here for F. So the frequency then is going to be 1 half square root of. So the 67 times 10 to a negative. 27 kilograms and then the spring constant is 500 then we screw the whole thing and divide by 2 pi so we get then that the frequency 8.7 times 10 to the 13 hertz go so the actual like we have the answer here uh, but the actual frequency if you look it up online it's 8.66 so this is good enough because this graph is kind of hard to uh, to get the numbers from because they're not labeled very well. Uh, you have to look at the axis and see where it falls. So this is good enough.